Hello everybody, so today I have the pleasure of being joined by the lovely Demonte Malune and for our viewers who know you at home, you are the YouTube sensation Tomboy a bit. I wouldn't call myself a sensation. Uh, I think you're a sensation. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so if you have not discovered Demonte's sensational world of motorcycling just yet, Demonte, could you tell our viewers who might not have um, heard about you before what you get up to on your YouTube channel and what you're all about? I ride, film, and build motorcycles. Yes. That's a long story short. <laughs> <laughs> and anything in between about motorcycles and occasionally some cars. <laughs> Fabulous. So you have been doing your YouTube channel for quite a long time now, haven't you? Since lockdowns. I started during the lockdowns, learning mostly, and then for a year now I'm doing it full time. It's amazing. So when you first started, what gave you the first idea to be like, okay, I love motorcycles, I am going to start this YouTube channel? No, I started with Instagram because okay. I was a photographer before and I had a degree in fashion, I was teaching fashion as well. So um, it was quite normal for me to transfer into Instagram where you can show your kind of portfolio and I started mm -hmm. riding motorcycle and posting pictures of my motorcycle and it was noticed by the Harley Davidson because I, my first bike was Harley Davidson and they shared the picture. And within one night, I, my, my account grew 2,000 or wow. 3,000 new followers. That's Back amazing. then it was, it was possible, now it is probably That's not. crazy. And then I started taking more pictures and my Instagram grew. I started getting deals from the brands and uh, kind of getting somewhere. And I tried different things until lockdown happened and everything just shut. And I decided to do YouTube. I always wanted to because I found that Instagram is not enough as a platform anymore. Yeah. I found that a lot of people, I, I, get, I get messages asking, do you even ride? And I, I say, yes, I'm not just posing on the motorcycles. <laughs> but I guess because you see a lot of accounts where ladies just posing, that's people presume that you're not even riding. Yeah. Now it is different with all the reels and videos, but I'm not sure about that platform anymore because it got a little bit um, not as artistic as it used to be. I see, I see. So then that's why you went on to starting your YouTube channel. Yes, yes, Brilliant. that's how it started. So people could get kind of more in depth view of what you do. Exactly. I, want, I wanted to show, I wanted to inspire people. I wanted my content to be not about me, but about the motorcycling world that I discovered seven years ago, mm -hmm. and which is incredible. I felt like I found Narnia. I felt like getting a motorcycle opened the door for me in this amazing world that I had no idea exists. And I wanted more people to see that, to discover that through my channel and then get a motorcycle. And afterwards building a motorcycle as well, I wanted to encourage other people to do things, to start riding, to start building, or to do some other things that they want maybe in life, but they not sure about that and thinking, maybe I'm too old, maybe I don't know anything, just start. And that was the idea of a channel. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. And I think um, for women as well, it's brilliant to encourage women to take on those roles. Okay, people might think, oh, well, that's more of a, um, a masculine thing to do, but why not? Why, why couldn't we enjoy doing the motorcycling exactly. and fun things like that as well? Exactly. So when did you first discover that you loved motorcycling and kind of the thrill of riding? I was a tomboy all my life. Uh, since uh, I was little and my father had a motorcycle when I was little and I used to ride with him in the side cart most of the time but sometimes he let me sit in the front wow, yes. that's brilliant. <laughs> we actually all family went for the trips to my grandparents for example me and my brother in the side cart and mum with dad that on the so bike cool. when I was little but I always wanted to ride I always had a vision that I will be riding when I was younger, but thankfully when I was younger I didn't because I would probably be dead by now. I was, I was absolutely fearless. Then I had a child and you know, life just kept going, moved to UK, had a child. And I thought, if now, then when? Mm. And uh, I decided to get a bike and got a Harley Davidson Sports as a first bike. <laughs> and then that's the photo as well that then got you that Got noticed. me into, yes. Yeah. And I, I thought maybe, maybe it's a sign, maybe, it's, uh, maybe that's exactly what 
I supposed to do and where I belong. And because I wanted anything I do to be meaningful for other people, not just me. Mm. I didn't want to do a job where I just earn money and spend it. I wanted a little bit deeper meaning into whatever I do in my life. That's probably why I wanted to go to teaching full time before I got a bike. And then I thought with this, I can reach people all over the world and just send the message, like you say, for women, but for men as well. Yeah. Educate the men that women don't belong just in the kitchen. I'm a very good cook as well. And I can sew and knit. I knitted this jumper. Wow! Uh, so uh, uh, you can be everything. You can be a female. <laughs> you, can, you can do not that so feminine things, which I hope that with time will be counted as not gender specific anymore. Definitely, definitely. And wow, you are a woman of many talents, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. So you mentioned that you obviously have kind of started, well, you started your YouTube channel um, not knowing much about building bikes, and then you have started to get better and better and better and better and better, and you wanted it to be kind of a creative journey of you. So. How did you uh, go about learning how to build the bikes? I just dropped myself into it head first, that's how I say it. I really wanted to build a motorcycle. The reason for that is I like classic motorcycles, I mm -hmm. like uh, retro, I like custom motorcycles. But owning one and riding one means you have to have a mechanical knowledge. Because those bikes, they break. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have to have a knowledge of, of the bike. Even if you're taking it to the garage to do that, you still have to have a knowledge of your motorcycle. I believe in that, being able to service it and all these things, mm. which I haven't been taught as a, when, be, being younger because I'm a girl. I've been taught all the girly things, but never, yeah. never that side, which I was always very curious about. And I decided that the best way to learn is to build the motorcycle because you take it all apart and mm -hmm. uh, then put it together in the different ways so it's creative and everything. But the problem was I had no motorcycle to start with. I had no finances to start with. I had no tools. I had no electricity in my garage and no skills or knowledge. So nothing. <laughs> on my birthday, on my Instagram, uh, I announced that if anyone wants to buy me a card or a cup of coffee for my birthday, they can donate some money, even if it is one penny. And for the amount I will collect, I will buy a motor motor or cycle or whatever I can afford for that amount. And I will put everybody's names on it, on, on that. That's such a cool and idea. And I will ride it for one year. That's what I said. I collected 264 pounds, which I didn't expect it to. And I thought, this is a lot. Yeah. People put the own hard earned cash into that, so I have to give back more mm -hmm. than, than they expect. And I decided to build a motorcycle. Somebody offered me a Honda CB750 for that exact amount, because it had to be for that exact amount, <laughs> yeah. which was non-runner uh, standing outside for eight years or so. <laughs> And I got that Honda, the parts were falling apart and it wasn't in the nice state at all. But I still didn't have place, I didn't have garage, I didn't have tools and I didn't have the most important thing, and knowledge. I started interviewing other builders. Mm -hmm. I started for my YouTube channel. I started interviewing where they start, where they working, how they doing it yes. basically. For myself and for everyone who's willing to start building motorcycles. Yeah. And I met Simon Perry from Mint Customs, uh, who I absolutely loved the way he built the bikes, everything about it. it. It was just a perfect builder for me because he was doing it a little bit different from the others, breaking the rules sometimes, but has amazing mechanical knowledge because all his lifetime he was a mechanic in Ducati and Suzuki in the British superbikes and. Uh, have very, very good knowledge. So it's a kind of combination, perfect combination. Mm. And he was working on Harleys as well, on Harley Sportsters, <laughs> which is my bike yeah. too. I went to interview him a second time and I mentioned him my build and he said, do it here. And that's how it started. Amazing. <laughs> Wow, it's how the kind of twists and turns have taken them to get you to where you had to then start building. That's 
is amazing. And also, like, you must have had to learn how to do the welding. That's all thanks to Simon, who was teaching me every and encouraging me and pushing me as well. And he, he was literally saying, I was holding the grinder first time in my life, and I had to cut the frame of that bike that I'm just about to build. And I was scared because I, I, never, I, I never used a grinder. Mm. And he was saying, you want this off? Cut this off. He, he didn't take it from me and didn't, he didn't let me to do baby steps or get scared. He was always and still pushes me to the maximum out of my comfort zone, out of my affairs, just to do everything what, what he, he thinks I can do, I am capable to do at my level of knowledge and yeah that's really cool do you think that's really helped you him pushing you so hard to be like okay no you go, you do it off you go i it, he definitely gave me a lot of confidence because i knew that he i don't have knowledge he does <laughs> so if he says that i can cut the frame i knew that i can cut the frame yeah. whereas alone i would be a lot more careful that would take a lot longer to learn mm. and a lot longer to try step by step and like little you know like we yeah. are we are ladies we're a little bit more careful men, men are careful. like oh, okay just gonna try the, yeah yeah we are like oh what if that what if that i knew that i can do that mm. and that probably the best thing about it because I I could go my first builders out, out out of this world for me for a lot of people who saw a lot of builds and custom motorcycles maybe it's not anything special but for me like it's it's amazing because I, I completely changed the bike yeah and it's it's incredible it's incredible feeling. <laughs> I bet, I bet. And then, so it, it rides and everything, like it's, pro it's you've completed it, that first bike now? So at the moment, it, we had problems with, because it was non-runner, we had problems with carburetors. It took months and months to sort them out because we don't do that obviously every day. Yeah. We meet every now and then and so other things happening and running a YouTube channel is a lot of time on I the bet. computer. Yes and a lot of time of planning and building is not the only line that I do. Mm. I do a lot of testing, writing and, yes. and, and all other things. So it took a while to sort out the cabs and now we have little electrical problems, which I hope so we'll sort this weekend and afterwards I'll be riding it. <gasps> that must feel absolutely amazing to know that you have built it from nothing basically and then now you're going to be able to ride it very soon that must be very exciting it is very exciting but i just started another build which i'm a lot more excited about because i always wanted to do that the honda cb750 came to me yes <laughs> whereas that was planned i always wanted to do a hardtail chop over harley davidson sportster and that's what I started. So I'm, I'm very, I'm sharing that excitement now mm. in between writing my first build and um, starting the second one, which is now bare frame on the frame jig. And I'm just about to cut it, leave just the headstock and build the entire frame myself, which is like super, super oh. exciting. That's, that's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, well, I can't wait to see when that one's, <laughs> when that one's finished as well. But you mentioned um, your YouTube um, channel and you've got so many different avenues that you go down and you get to go to some amazing places. And I saw that you went on a kind of road trip with some other um, YouTubers um, to the south of France was it yes, on Indian yes, bikes yes. so how was that what was that experience like it looked epic I was invited by Indian Motorcycles USA to a south of France trip with other girls uh, in the industry who may be doing YouTube or Instagram mm -hmm. or have a the own uh, brand or something like that and it was to um, celebrate International Women's Day <laughs> and we did a six day all south of France, wow. and it, it was incredible. It, it was a great experience. <gasps> was, there, was there any part of um, France that you thought was really beautiful and it just the bikes looked gorgeous when you were riding them along the countryside? You know, I'm addicted to riding motorcycle, so every time, <laughs> no matter how bad is the weather, no matter how bad is the road or, or the bike, I still love it. Even if at the moment I'm very cold and very frustrated and everything, afterwards I still love that as experience. So everything south of France is incredibly beautiful and yeah. I discovered one of the most amazing roads, which is great for the car drivers as well. <laughs> it was created by um, 
by the Racing Cars Club or Classic Racing Cl Cars Club. Uh, okay. in, yes, that road is called Cornish Doch. Right. And it goes from Saint-Tropez towards, um, towards the Monaco. And it's really on the coastal, and one side is the sea, oh. and the other side is the orange mountains. Wow. And it's breathtaking. <gasps> the day that we had off riding, and all the girls went on the beach, I took the bike and I came back to that road to do it twice. <laughs> Amazing. So there you go, guys. If you're ever thinking going to south of France with your classic car, that is the road oh, yes. that you need to go down oh, yes. without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, a lot of classic cars on that road and it just looks so beautiful. A lot of places to stop and everywhere you stop is just breathtaking, absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, it must have been a marvellous experience to have and to share on Women's Day with all those women as yes, well. Yes, really good, definitely. really cool. Um, but you've been to lots of other places with your work, haven't you? So when you um, get asked to go to these places, is it really exciting or do sometimes you like, oh, I was like, worrying about being away or how, how do you feel about it? Sometimes it is very exciting. Most of the times it is very exciting. Yeah. Everything is exciting. <laughs> Not always have been asked. Sometimes I organize it myself to go to the places. Like recently I've just went to Tenerife and oh. it's incredible. It's as good as uh, Scornish Do. Oh. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. The roads are amazing, and the, the surface is great, and you can get in the ferry in your classic car. <laughs> so you can go in the ferry in your classic car, guys. There you go, to Tenerife. So why did you decide to go to Tenerife? What was that for? Because it was cold here. <laughs> and I went to ride a motorcycle. In the sun. <laughs> so I, I literally, in Google search, I typed, where is hot in Europe now? And Tenerife came up Brilliant. as one of the destinations. Then I, I, I typed, motorcycle rentals Tenerife. And that's how, how I planned it. A few Brilliant. weeks before coming here, and I spent four days literally riding until almost the last minute when they had to go to the airplane. <laughs> that is so cool, that is brilliant. It must be really exciting to know, oh, okay, it's okay, I can just go to that motorcycle place, I'm gonna pick up that motorcycle, I'm, I'm gonna be off. Yes. I'll see you yes. in a couple of days. <laughs> yes. No, it's amazing. It's, it's really, really the best part of my job that I get to ride everywhere. I get to ride all the different motorcycles, very often to ride exclusive motorcycles as well. But most important, I get to meet people, amazing people in the industry and amazing riders and builders and very inspirational stories to share with everyone. What is your most favorite bike that you've ever um, ridden? Oh dear, that's hard, you know, I don't, it, it's, it can't be one bike, because one day I enjoy riding my sports mm -hmm. stuff, but the next day I think like, no, it's horrible, and I want to ride something fast, and to ride on the beautiful road, and, and really work on my technical riding, and improve my riding, and then sports is not good for that. But then another day, I, I, I like small bikes somewhere in the country lanes, and it depends from the weather, it depends from the road, it depends from the company, it depends from so many things. I, I couldn't say that one bike is enough. <laughs> yeah, you need one for each day of the week. Exactly. <laughs> At least five. Or I, I, I would be happy to have. I'm very lucky that I get press bikes to ride, and I had uh, have a lot of different motorcycles to ride, so I don't have to owe. Oh, them, own them, them, them all. But, yeah, um, oh, no, it's very yeah. cool. I, I'm very lucky here as well because of the competition cars. I get to drive a lot of the classic cars, which yeah, is really so you don't exciting. have to own them all. Yeah, <laughs> but I get to have a go in them, which is yeah, fun. exactly, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so you have actually been to Bridge Classic Cars before, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have. Uh, and I've ridden two motorcycles, Francis Barnett, don't remember exactly which year and what model, and also BSA. Amazing. A little BSA, yep. Well, it's changed a lot here, hasn't it, since yes. the last time yes. you came? It's this amazing. whole room wasn't here, was it, you were mentioning earlier? Yeah, you didn't have a showroom, so it's amazing that now people can come and see your cars and a couple of bikes as well. <laughs> a couple in there. We thought we'd get them out for you especially. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a very good choice. I really like it. <laughs> but is there any cars in here at the moment that have caught your eye? The Alfa Romeo Spider. Yeah. It is nice, that yeah, one. That, we're just done shooting for that today as well, so that's yeah, competition it's car. It's beautiful be and soon. it's a lovely colour as well. And uh, I, just, I just love little two-door convertibles, classic. I, I used to have a, 
um, MX5 MK1 oh. with a flip of headlights, and Amazing. I absolutely loved it. But it just fell apart before I got a chance to restore it, oh, and nice. put it all together. Well, you know how to do a bike now, so a car is next on yeah. the cards, yeah, maybe? Yeah, it should be. It should be. The problem was I didn't have the space where to store it until I will have time and finances to sort it out. So I, yeah. I, I lost it, unfortunately. Oh. But I absolutely loved driving it. It was the, my favorite car that I owned. Oh, but what is next on the cards for you? Because you've got so many exciting things happening. What's your next big project? So the big project now, I'm just starting my hardtail chopper. That's yeah. probably the biggest project and the biggest step, which I'll be riding everywhere this summer and going to all the shows and going to all the chopper meetings. And I want to um, explore and show more of that culture because that's mm -hmm. where I started with my even it was brand new Harley still I got I was allowed in that culture and yeah those people and, and they are they are so different in the way it's kind of almost like stepping back in time in the way it's so much freedom in that culture still mm -hmm. whereas we're losing that all over the place yeah. aren't we and it just feels different it's just, it, it, it feels so like it's you with the open road, you feel a bit more free, being able to meet new people. Exactly, and, the, and, make new and people are amazing. Literally, when I started riding motorcycle, I discovered, I, I started believing in humanity again. I, <laughs> I, I, I think people are amazing. I fell in love with people again. <laughs> oh, that is such a lovely sentiment. That's so nice. <laughs> and as well, you mentioned earlier, like your YouTube channel is about giving other people as well the confidence to try something new like you did, to be able to think, OK, you've started at something. OK, maybe you're an adult now and you're not going to be brilliant at it the first time you do it. But how much you've improved, you wanted to share that with and exactly. The public, didn't you? Exactly, exactly. Uh, because I was thinking, okay, I'm not an experienced builder, I'm not an experienced rider, so I don't have enough knowledge to share to people to give them value of watching mm. my videos. And uh, in entertainment, for me personally, is not enough. I am reading non fiction books only. So <laughs> I, for me, it has to be something for people to take from each video. But at the same time, it, was very, it should be very easy to watch and very entertaining at the same time. Because when I, I try to watch the videos of how to build a motorcycle, everybody has so much knowledge and everybody, you, you just feel out of the space, it scares you rather than encourage, encourage you to them. start. And I wanted to show that, I wanted to show that very start that a lot of people don't show because of their ego and because mm. it, 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 it's, <laughs> It's not, it's not beautiful, is it, <laughs> to be scared in front of the camera? It probably requires more courage than to yeah. actually do the thing, to be, a, to, to be able to share that. Definitely, so. putting yourself in that kind of more vulnerable position to be like, OK, so I've started this. Like, I'm not great at it yet, but I will be. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I will be ever. And now, now I will start riding a track and I'm scared again. It's, it's like starting a new thing again. So in between the builds, we build a track bike for me to ride on the track and it had my first track day and I shared that and that is very scary you know because everybody who is on the track are very good riders and wow. I started on the Harley Davidson so uh, that that makes you a good rider but in a bit different way uh, let's put it that way wow what's it like and, riding uh, on track it's amazing place it's it, it's uncomparable with anything else. It is very scary at the beginning, but once you're on, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to be, you can't, you can't afford to be scared because that can, that you will make a mistake if yeah. you will be. So your concentration is so high that it feels almost like meditation. I see. Because you, you have to constantly be on. You have to be constantly in the moment. Mm. You, you have no other thoughts. 20 minute session. Imagine, imagine meditation of 20 minutes when you have no other thoughts coming. Nothing. You, you, Just you don't think about your work. You don't think about your relationship. You don't think about, about the, like anything. It's just you, motorcycle, and every bend after bend after bend. It's, it's incredible. 
Wow. It's very addictive as well. Oh my goodness. Well, the next time you do a track, please tell us and we'd love to come along and watch. Okay. <laughs> but thank you so, so much for coming in. It's been amazing talking to you. And if you have not yet, go and check out Demonte's YouTube channel. Thank you so much and thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.